Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In today's video, we're going to learn all about angular dependency injection. Now, I'm sure you've learned about angular basics. If you haven't, then check out our other videos on angular. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. So let's begin. First, we'll have a look at what's in store for us. First, we'll understand what exactly dependency injection is. Then we'll understand the demerit or the drawback of not using dependency injection. Then we'll understand dependency injection as a design pattern. And finally, I'll help you understand the entire concept with the help of a demo. So let's begin. What exactly is dependency injection? So let's consider this. I'm sure you're aware that Angular uses the concept of components. The entire UI of the application is divided into several components. Now, what if all of these components perform similar tasks, be it accessing the database, rendering images, etc. Now, instead of writing the same piece of code for every component, you could write the code once and then perhaps inject the same code into every component. Now, this is supported by dependency injection. Now, to give you a better example, consider two classes A and B. Now, let's assume that A uses the objects of class B. And normally in object-oriented programming, an instance of class B is created so that A can access its objects. But using dependency injection, we move the creation and binding of dependent objects outside of the class that depend on them. So, dependency injection or DI keeps the code more flexible, testable and mutable. Also, classes can inherit external logic without having to create on its own. And lastly, DI benefits directives, pipes and components. Next up, let's have a look at the drawback of not using dependency injection. Now let's consider class postal details that is dependent on the number and the address class. In the postal details class, the constructor creates copies of the number and address. So when you instantiate a new postal details class, the constructor instantiates a unique number and address. Now, although this looks simple, there's a problem with this code. Let's assume that the number and address class constructors now accept parameters. When we change the numbers class, the postal details class gets broken. Now to overcome this, what we need to do is we need to pass parameter to the number constructor. So this applies to address as well. The first drawback of using this traditional method is that the code is not very flexible. Anytime the dependencies change, the postal details class needs to be changed as well. And the second drawback is that the code is not suitable for testing. Once you instantiate the new postal details class, you get the same number and address. Even if you change the number and address classes every time, what if these classes are in turn dependent on other classes? then it's going to be a chain reaction. So to overcome this, we make use of dependency injection. Now let's look at DI as a pattern. Dependency injection, as you all know, is a coding pattern where a class receives its dependencies from an external source rather than creating them on its own. So here in the above example, we have moved the definition of dependencies from inside the constructor to the constructor's parameters. So the postal details class doesn't create the dependencies anymore. It just consumes them. So the postal dependencies class doesn't create the dependencies anymore. So with that, we overcome the drawbacks of not using DI. So now that you know what exactly dependency injection is and how vital it is, let's look at a simple demonstration to understand the concept better. Now services, classes, modules, components, all of these are benefactors of dependency injection. So in the demo, I'm going to be showing how dependency injection can be used with the help of services and injecting these services into classes. So the main uh, thought behind this is normally components are used to ensure just a good user experience. These components do not generally execute tasks. So to execute these tasks, we make use of services. So a component can delegate tasks like fetching data from the server, any network related issues, etc. to a particular service. And these services can be made available to components. With the same thought, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be creating a service 
that performs the task of displaying an employee list. Later, we're going to inject this service into the class using dependency injection. So let's head to our Visual Studio code for the demonstration. All right, so as discussed, I'll have to first create a component that displays a button for the employee and then I have to create a service class and inject it into my component. Now this service holds the employee details such as name, employee ID, email ID, etc. So first let's go ahead and create a component. So here let me just type NGGC and the name of the component I'm providing is M info. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. All right. So as you can see here in my app folder, I have the component with four different files. All right. So the next thing we have to do is we have to create a service. So to create that, we make use of the command NGGS. You can either give S or service and the service name I'm providing is records. So let me just say records here. All right, here you can see two files are created. There is a spec.ts file and the .ts file. All right, so now the service contains all the employee data that needs to be displayed, right? So let's go ahead and write the data. So first we're going to make use of three arrays. I'm going to be displaying employee records for three employees. So I'll have to create three arrays and provide certain information. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the array I'm creating is called info one for the first employee. And I'm going to be passing information like name, employee ID and the email ID. So the arrays of type string and within which let me just mention the details. I'm giving random information. I'm just saying Adam Taylor and some random employee ID and let's say at at abc.net. All right, so I'm going to be creating three records. So I'll just copy the same thing and paste for the rest too. Let's just change here, provide a different name here. And same for the last one. Let me change the name of the array as well. All right. So with the agenda to retrieve this data in our component, we make use of the method for the same, right? So this method returns the employee data. So let's go ahead and create this method. I'm going to call it get info. And then just say string. And then this will just return this dot info one. All right, I'm going to be calling it get info one for better understanding. Same for the rest two as well. I'm just going to return different arrays here. All right, and lastly, info three. All right. Now, in order to retrieve this information in our component, we need three more arrays, right? Three more arrays that will receive this data. Let's go back to our component.ts file here and then type in the following code. So I've created three arrays again, uh, info received one, two and three. Now, what we need to do is we have to accept the information that is being sent from the service, correct? Now, as I mentioned services are implemented with the help of dependency injection. So what we need to do is we'll have to first import the service into the component.ts file. The key reason behind doing this is that when Angular creates this component, an instance of the service class is also made to perform the necessary tasks. 
correct so let's go ahead and just import it here so i'll say import records services i'm sorry service from and let's say records.service all right and what we have to do next is that we must also declare this instance that is being created in the providers array of the component all right so let's just say providers and then say records service all right now we've created the instance of this class right However, to access this instance, an object is also created. So this object will in turn access the methods and variables of the service class. So for that, we have to create another object. So let's do that here in our constructor method. Let's say constructor private. And the object I'm creating is called our service. You can give a name of your choice. And then I'm going to just say records service. All right. Now this object will help me retrieve data from the service. So let's go ahead and use this in order to get the employee details. All right. So I've created three different methods here. Get info from service class two, one and three. And these methods will retrieve the data and add it to our array here. That is info received. All right. And lastly, we'll have to create an unordered list in our HTML file here. We haven't added anything. So let me get rid of this. So now I have to create three different buttons for three different employees. And when the user clicks on the button, the data is retrieved from the service and then displayed on the UI, right? So as you can see, I've created buttons for three different employees. And then I've made use of a bootstrap class called list group info. And then I've interpolated info, which displays the contents of the info variable. All right. Now, in order to call the methods in the .ts file, we have to bind them with the button. So since it is bound with the click event, every time you click on the button, the information is displayed. So now the last thing we have to do is we'll have to create a custom HTML tag for the component and then add it to the main component. So let's just do that. Let me copy this here. And then in my app component.html, let me get rid of this. And then let me just create this. I've just created the custom HTML tag for my component. And now just to beautify the code, I'll write a heading and let's say employee details. And then I'll also add the simply learn logo, say image source. I've I've added the image here. So let me just say logo.png. I've also added some styling to it. All right. So now let me just save this and have a look at the browser. So here we go. We have the logo here and then employee details heading. And then we have three different buttons created that is employee one, two, and three. And when I click on it, the information of the employee is displayed, the name, the ID, and their email address. So yeah, so this is how you can make use of dependency injection and inject a service class into a component. Dependency injection plays a crucial role in Angular. So with that, we come to the end of this session. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'd also suggest you check out our previous video on Angular services to get a better understanding of that concept. So thank you so much for being here 
and watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.